great to see you here. My name is Luc de Custer, founder of the Custer Academy. And in this new video, I will talk about the risk planning processes and in particular, plan risk management. When we talk about risk, when we talk about risk management planning, the first thing we are going to do is to look at planning how we will deal with risk management. And when we look at the PIMBOK, the sixth version, you see that every process that was defined or that is in the PIMBOK starts with a plan step. It wasn't like that before. The first process that had a plan step was in fact risk management. And in the sixth version, and I think also in the fifth version, it was in fact um, added to all the processes. But before we continue, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. So let's have a look. Risk management planning process. What is this about? Well, when we look at the risk management planning, we look at creating the risk management plan. And it's very important to create a plan because in the plan, we will describe how we will deal with risk, what we will do, all the different steps that we will use to create the risk management plan. And the first step in here is the plan risk management. And it's the first element that we will start doing during the project planning step. So we're in project planning. Let's be clear about that. There is no focus on the risks itself at this moment, but it will in fact make the rules that we are going to follow. Uh, what is the way that you will conduct the risk management through the processes, through the project? Now, when we look at planning, planning in this case means that we are being proactive. We are going to take measures so that we can react very quickly, that we understand what is happening. We're not going to sit and wait and see what's going to happen. We create a plan. We set up the rules for the plan. Here we describe the different tools and the principles that we will use and how we will use them. So it's a very important element. It's basically creating the baseline, how we will do project management. It can come from sorry, project risk management, it can come from the company's risk management policies itself. There can be a standing operating procedure about this, but for every project, we have to adjust it to the specificities of the project itself. Now, this will also drive the following six processes. So there are seven processes. We go to risk identification, qualification, quantification. We are going to create the responses we plan for the responses then we execute the responses and we monitor and control the responses what we define in plan risk management is in fact going to define how we will deal with these steps what is the frequency how we react if we identify things that are different than we expected now when we look at the inputs for the risk management plan or plan risk management we have first the project charter. The project charter is always a very important element. It provides already information about the structure of the project, some risk elements. All the components of the project management plan that we already have. We are doing this typically at the end of the uh, planning step. And we have all those things that we did before. We looked at the identification of the scope, the duration, the cost, all these elements, quality, all these elements we already have. So all the things that are relevant will be used here to create the plan risk management step. We have project documents, and very important here is the stakeholder register. Well, of course, we have the EAFs, the enterprise environmental factors, and the organizational process assets. The EAFs uh, tell us in what environment we are working, and the OPAs give us the information of the things that we already built, the information that we already have related to risk management. Once we finish this process, we have a methodology. We have a methodology how to deal with risks. We have the roles and responsibilities of the people who will be involved in the risk. We have budgets that we define. There is a timing that we set up. When are we going to do which steps? What is the order of those steps? We look at different risk categories and we also create 
or we have a model for the risk breakdown structure. Then we have the definition of the risk probability and impact and the probability and impact matrix. We set up the scales. So we have to define what do these probabilities and impacts mean. And once we have those, we can create the probability and impact matrix. We set up the scale so we identify what are the reactions, when, what are we going to do, which projects or which uh, risk events are we going to select, and so on. We look at stakeholder tolerances. Very important to understand what are those stakeholder tolerances for our project. It can be different than other projects, so we have to see how tolerant are the stakeholders related to risks. We look at a reporting format, and we also have a tracking system we have to set up. How are we going to report and how are we going to track those different elements related to risks? You can say, yes, the reporting format, we can use the same format for all the projects. Well, it depends. We uh, may be dealing with the same people who have the same desires about reporting formats, but it is possible that for our project, we need to focus on different things. So we create a reporting format for our project. The first thing that we can have a look is the that is the probability and impact matrix. And we look at some uh, scores. We have here an impact score uh, when there is a zero, uh, very low, low, medium, up to extreme. What is the impact element that we have? We have to define those. We will look at a more detailed element in the next slide. Probability is basically the expected occurrence of the risk in percentage. And it's between zero and 100%. When the probability is zero, there is no risk, it will not happen. And when it's 100%, we are sure it's going to happen, so we don't have to consider it a, a risk. It can be a risk, but we don't have to say uh, it, it will happen. It's certainty at this, uh, this case. Uh, the impact is how much it influences the project scope, quality, people, and budget. And we have to set up a scale for your project. So let's first have a look at the impact. Here we have an overview of the different impact parameters. We look at the scale. Uh, we go from very high to nil. We have probabilities that we have. And here we look at the probabilities. It's not only the impact we are talking about. We look at the probability when you say very high, it's more than 85%. Nil is less than 3%. And you can adjust this scale for your project. You can have this from other projects, it depends, but you can review it. Impact on the project objectives, positive and negative. So we look at the time, we look at very high in this case, when it's more than five months, uh, change. When it's nil, there is no change. The same thing for the cost, we have to define those elements. And for quality, we have a uh, relation here between the effect on the quality and the scale that we are going to use. And that's going to be added basically, to our probability and impact matrix. Now, the thing that we also have to do here is create a schedule, a schedule where we can see what are the effects on the negative impact, the positive impact, and what are the risks that we are going to deal with. So for every risk, we are going to look at the impact, negative impact for a threat and the probability and the positive impact and the probability for an opportunity. And we put all these risks in those little rectangles. And we see for the threats, we have the red rectangles. Those are the rectangles where we have to take some measure because these are very important risks. They have, are very dangerous for the project. The light red are the things that we have to observe, uh, to evaluate and white we just accept. For the opportunities, we have the same principle. Dark green means that here we have opportunities that we can really realize they will have an important effect. So we try to let them happen. The light green ones are the opportunities that we don't really know what's going to happen. We're going to monitor them. And the white, again, the zone we were just accepted. We'll just see what happens. So there's the basic model that we will use when we have the actual information about the threats and the opportunities. And here we will identify the risks that will go to the quantification step. 
The last thing here what we set up is the risk breakdown structure or the RBS. Typically the RBS has four elements, technical elements, external elements, risk related to the organization and risk related to the project management. But that we will discuss in more detail in the next video. So that was it for the plan risk management step. Very important step, defining the baselines, how we are going to deal with risks. And that's it. In the next video, we will continue with this. So before leaving, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.